every strong man is a pair of knitting needles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sheila Robelstead. And I'm Lynn Zwirling. And together we run our project called Knitting Behind Bars. We thought that if somebody could enjoy the peace that knitting brings to us, we would bring it to somebody who really needed the peace. So I could not find one jail who said, oh yeah, no problem, come on in. They all said no. We're not equipped to handle that. And they all said, no, men don't want to knit. I said, oh, yeah, they want to knit. They just don't know they want to knit. Okay, so it's the same into so the it's front the door. Into the front door. It took five years to get a, a, a jail to pay attention to me. And then it took uh, these last two years for Sheila and I to really uh, secure it in the, the jail. So we've been running it for two years. Well, it started off a little slow because the inmates was a little bit reluctant as males to be doing knitting or things like that, but really they enjoy it. They really enjoy it, and you can see the difference. And it's not just older inmates, it's of all ages, of all ages. So, there we have a, a gaggle of guys all covered with tattoos and, and missing teeth and whatever else that life brings to us um, waiting for us. Um, the men are, are sometimes very angry when they first come, when they haven't really experienced what they're going to find out. They really don't want to come. Sometimes there's a lot of peer pressure from other prisoners to come because they think that they can get something out of this program. Some of my lifting partners said, hey, there's a, there's a program. So we're going knitting. And I said, we're not going knitting. <laughs> so then uh, well, we tried it and it was, it was really nice. They don't have much interaction with others than themselves. Uh, and I believe that they take advantage of this opportunity to practice, to hone their social skills. You know, they're in bad moods, they come in and they make a beeline right for their project. They take their project, they go back to their, their seat, and they immediately start knitting. Some of them, we don't hear another word out of it the entire time. We try to respect that. It takes you away. You have to actually pay attention to what you're doing. So everything else that had you all upset and pissed off, you you can't really pay attention to. They're just like any other knitter that you've ever experienced. They never want to stop. So that when we say, okay, it's time to clean up, they're going, oh, one more row, one more stitch, one more anything that they can possibly get in. They uh, all become very polite in our presence. Into the front door. I also can do it like you. You, you can. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And, uh, I, I keep after them until I hear that they've told their grandmother or they've told their mother or they've told their daughter or their wife or their whatever. And then I ask them, well, how did they respond? And without fail, it is usually they didn't believe me. And I told her I'm really doing that. She started laughing, really. I told her, don't, don't laugh at me. I'll make her a little sweater by the time I come home. Many of the guys make hats for children or nieces or mothers or grandmothers or wives or girlfriends, people that they have hurt. And we have encouraged them to give these hats to those people. Unless we uh, change our attitudes, and unless we change the manner in which we deal with these people returning to society, we are only building this them and us society, which has got to be very dangerous. These young, uh, these men, some of them not so young, are eager to enter back in society. They would like to become us, and it is my goal for that us to be all-inclusive.